one of the best pieces of advice that I got from an astronaut that traveled for the first time to space just a couple of years ago. She said, I thought I knew what to expect. And then I looked out the cupola window and I looked at the curvature of the Earth and I knew that I was never gonna be the same person again. Since I was a child, I would look at outer space and astronauts, and I knew there was something magical about it. I couldn't really describe, and I still can't totally describe what it is about that. But what I know is that, that even today, when I drive through the gates and I see the NASA symbol, it's no different. It gives me that same heart skipping a beat feeling. This will be my first trip to space. I'm a member of the Expedition 58 and 59 crew flying to the International Space Station in 2018. We have about two to 300 experiments at any one time going on on the space station. And on any given day, an astronaut may wake up and physically touch 20 of those experiments. Maybe it's moving a Petri dish. Maybe it's taking an observation. Maybe it's starting or stopping an experiment. But all of these experiments are going on simultaneously and we are just one small part of the puzzle. One of the big current issues that we're investigating is fluid shifts in the body. A lot of people have heard about eyesight in astronauts. Over a period of six months, our eyesight changes. Is that because of the fluid shift or the intracranial pressure? So we're conducting multiple experiments on our own bodies while we are in space so that we understand all of the known unknowns and even the unknown unknowns and make them known. At the U.S. Military Academy, I studied mechanical engineering and as a graduate student at the University of Bath in the U.K., I studied aerospace engineering. It really just kind of laid a framework for me on, a, on attacking any problem. And I remember we were conducting a flight test where we were flying a helicopter up to about 19,000 feet. And we had to do all of the equations to figure out what the limits of that aircraft would be. You have to come up with those limitations yourself. We got up there to about 19,000 feet, and I knew that I could go to a 22 degree angle of bank before I would get into trouble with the airflow over my rotor disc. And I remember thinking, I did take the sign of that angle, not the cosine, right? <laughs> I realized I was trusting my life to my ability to do math. And it humanized it. it, it engineering was no longer just something that was in books. It was like, holy cow, this is gonna affect my life. But the space program is exactly that. The people that I run into every single day have done the math on a piece of paper or the back of a napkin or in a spreadsheet that will enable us to live and to explore. Going forward, what is the next logical step? Is it going to be human Mars exploration? To really make progress, goals need to be set and maintained over a very long period of time. Nobody's going to get to Mars because two years prior they said that they wanted to go. This is a 10-year, a 20-year commitment with many international partners committed to a single goal. It takes dedicated resources that are reliable year after year after year after year. We can't change our goals just because we changed political parties. You know, in the 1960s, I hear so many stories of people just saying, I walked out and I looked up. And I just, I kept looking up and just thinking, we have a human being on the moon. That's one small step for man. And then when you looked back down, your neighbors were looking up also. Everybody, for a moment, was just human. We're all in this together. We live on a very fragile planet that we have to take care of. I think we're on the cusp of being able to do incredible things. 
I hope that we can continue to show the strength and the unifying nature of space exploration.